Hi and welcome to another episode of Fully Charged. This week coming from Senex, the Low Carbon Vehicle Exposition here at the Millbrook Proving Grounds in Bedfordshire. Now I've been here before, we've done episodes from here before, but in the past it's been well, six years ago, a Nissan Leaf and a, a, a Toyota Prius and a couple of rain-soaked tents in a car park. This year, it's absolutely massive. There's hundreds of electric and hydrogen and plug-in hybrid cars here. There's an enormous amount going on. But this is a special episode. This episode is sponsored by Electric Nation. And that's what this show is all about. The Electric Nation is a project to discover what happens when hundreds of electric cars all plug in at the same time. So, Jill, this project is very exciting. Over the whole country, you're trying to get as many electric car drivers as possible to use the, the smart chargers. We are looking to recruit between 500 to 700 uh, electric vehicle drivers to right. take part in the Electric Nation trials. Um, we will be trialling a range of smart charging solutions. Right. So it's not just one particular make, it's di different types. That's right. Two types of smart charger provided by ICU and Evolt. Um, and we'll be looking to see how customers accept having their charging uh, effectively remotely controlled to varying degrees. Not to prejudge what we're going to find out, but we do anticipate that most people won't actually notice yeah. what's happening. And in reality, um, you have to bear in mind that this may only happen once or twice a year. It will probably be a very infrequent event. And ultimately, it's all about making sure that our local electricity networks um, can facilitate the increased numbers of electric vehicles. So it's all about supporting more electric cars on our roads. And the more uh, cars that you put in a single area, the more stress that you're going to put on. I mean, the network was never really designed no. to have so many things all in one place. It was designed for powering people's homes, for cooking. It wasn't originally designed for uh, transportation right. fuel as well. If uh, there's a a couple of streets with 50 or 60 electric cars that are all plugged in at the same time when people come home at night. Things like time of use tariffs can, can help and to a certain extent the market will dictate when those tariffs are and will help alleviate some of the overall issues. But that local clustering effect um, probably still needs an element of either significant upgrade in an area or a bit of smart intelligence applying to it just to make sure that if um, the unexpected does happen, we suddenly get a lot of charging all at once, that we don't end up with an issue uh, on the mains. Because the last thing we want is for the lights to go out. We've all seen those graphs where there's this huge spike of demand in the evening and then it drops right off during the night. And one of the arguments I've heard from someone at the National Grid is if, we, if there were a lot of electric cars charging at night, then that usage would, would level a bit. Yeah, 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 it would. Still... I mean, I mean, lots of modelling has been done into how consumers with cars may well decide this, decide to charge, yeah. um, and there's lots of different results. One of the things that is common is what one thing you do see, even with time of use tariffs, is a big increase uh, in that peak sort of tea time demand. Right. So post tea time when people come home from work, uh, and that's one of the things through the smart charging that we're we're proposing will just be a way of limiting. At uh, that peak, so uh, at those times, and avoid oversizing the grid. Yes. Um, well, because ultimately, be if we oversize it, yeah. so, you know, customers have to pay, and yeah, yeah. that doesn't feel 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 right to us. No, no. It's basically if you want to get an electric car and you want to take part in it, you're, you're there to kind of help people sort that out, how you do it. That's right. I mean, Drive Electric, we're a leasing company and we specialise in electric vehicles, but we're aiming to recruit between five and 700 people for the trial. They don't, don't have to come through us. Right. I'm going out there to recruit anyone who's going to get an electric car, and it can be through leasing, they can have bought the vehicle outright. My job is really to find these people, engage with them, make them aware of the trial, um, you know, and, and potentially get them involved and uh, initiated into the project. Carl, one of the things we know is that there's more people buying electric cars now than ever before. The, the, the market's growing, I think it's fair to say. And, and the, the one thing that is really obvious is the batteries are getting bigger, generally, or the capacity is getting bigger. You're right, yeah, capacity is the key. Range is the absolute Achilles heel to any electric car. I think we all know that. You've definitely seen sales go up then since you've we, launched we, the, we've new, seen the new model. Since the launch of the new car, we've seen significant demand um, increase, um, significant interest, both from those um, early rejectors, let's call them, who right. said actually 80 miles just simply isn't enough. Yeah. And we've also seen a lot of new customers who we haven't had contact with before saying, I've heard about the range. It now seems to be viable. I really like the idea about 
about the tax incentives. I really like the idea about low-cost motoring, um, and uh, yeah, really they are absolutely keen to uh, to move on with it. What we're looking at today is the, the 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 other side of that is that battery capacities are going to increase. That means we've got to have more electricity to fill those batteries, and You're that's right. really and, what and, we're looking at. I think at. there is a little bit of a uh, of a worry with some people, particularly you know when you start talking to them in detail. But hang on a minute, what happens when everybody, or let's say I don't know, 25% of the motoring public, are plugging in their car at a similar time? Are we going to see massive blackouts? Are the lights going to go out? Yeah. That sort of thing. And I think it is a key point that needs addressing. So Andy, what is becoming increasingly apparent to me is that there's there's a kind this it feels like there's a disconnect between the car manufacturers who are bringing out more and more cars with bigger and bigger batteries that can charge faster and faster, and the power companies and distribution network that are going, hang on, absolutely, <laughs> hang on, what's happening? Absolutely, I, I th well, there's a there's a disconnect, but there's also a huge opportunity if we can join these two groups together. You know, one of the challenges is energy storage. And if we're putting a huge energy storage capability into the cars, can we use that to balance the grid? So there's a number of really good projects coming up. Uh, and we're actually brokering uh, a new group, an electric vehicle network group, to try and join up these two industries and really capitalize on the, the genuine opportunity of making electric vehicles work with the electricity grid and supply system. The opportunity of mitigating the peaks of electricity demand by using that stored energy are equally as, as beneficial as those challenges we face if, if everybody came home and plugged in at the uh, at the advert break uh, you know yes. we would have exactly that problem yeah so i mean so what you're talking about then is very much vehicle to grid going both ways communicating smartly that whole development of that technology yeah. there's a number of different ways of going about it and one of them is is managing the charging the time of charging and whether that's through signals about pricing. Uh, obviously companies at the moment pay on a half hourly basis and they can pay I think five times as much for a kilowatt hour of electricity at peak time as they do uh, overnight. So if you've got the right price signals, uh, consumers could, could take that same model and most people don't need their electric vehicle charged absolutely there and then at full rate. So it's providing the opportunity for people to think and, and making it simple for them. Uh, I don't know about you, but I don't look at my electricity every half an hour to see what's going on. Yeah, yeah. So it needs to be intuitive. Yeah. There's a problem with electricity tariffs. We're not allowed to have lots and lots of electricity tariffs because the perception was the market would be too complex. So that's one of the things holding back electricity supply companies in delivering creative tariffs. Right, yes. Well, that's very interesting. So, so basically what you're, what you're trying to facilitate is the, a really important discussion that we really, really need to have. Yeah, it's a discussion between the automotive industry, the electricity supply generation and supply, but very much the distribution industry as well. I mean, the, 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 the distribution network is one of the key elements that will really need to be um, applied and, 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 and sophisticated more to enable uptake, huge uptake of electrification of transport. There's more people buying electric cars, one, and yes. two, they, they, the batteries are getting bigger. I mean, the Leaf is a very good example. The more cars there are, the more demand there is on the grid to charge them. We can use the car to help the grid, so not actually be an extra demand, but actually plug them in so they can charge and discharge when they're needed. It actually makes it part of the solution, not part of the problem. So basically, with these units, you can come home, say you've taken the car out during the day, you went, it was 100% when you left, you come back, it's at 45%, for example. The idea being you then plug the, the house into the car, and so you can actually sell it when sell energy back into the grid when demand's high and use it when you need it. And so what you might find is you come home, your car's at 45%, by about 10 o'clock at night, that may have actually dropped to 35% because you've been using it and selling some of the energy back. And then at one, two, three in the morning, when there's no grid demand, that's when it will recharge up to a, to a level. We've sold 15,000 LEAF and EMV so far here in the UK. So there's 15,024 kilowatt batteries out yes. there that can bolster the grid yeah. and smooth off those peaks in demand. I mean, even 15,000 cars, what they're actually holding is actually a, a sizable amount of electricity. When they're all full, that's a lot of juice. Yeah, you're completely correct, yeah. yes, there is. And at the moment, and I think you alluded to it a little bit earlier, the fact that we've had 24 kilowatt batteries, the, a lot of them going out now on the Leafs are 30 kilowatts, so you've got that extra capacity. But what we're also finding is that battery degradation is a lot, lot slower than anybody predicted. So these batteries will have, when they get used in a second life, are actually going to have a, a much bigger potential than we thought they'd have. 
There are challenges, but there's also yeah. opportunities yeah. as well. Um, certainly with, with smart uh, infrastructure, then you can moderate that demand as well, but there's also vehicle to grid as well. So uh, it's helping smooth demand, and also that fits in very well with uh, more renewable energy as well. So yes, there are challenges, but there's opportunities as well. You all know these statistics, but there's certainly a lot more electric cars on the road than there were, say, five years ago. I mean, it's oh, yes. a very noticeable difference. Many more, many more. I mean, uh, uptake has uh, increased dramatically. I think 2015, there are more cars registered than the previous four years put together. And 2016 is continuing to set records for the level right, of so registration. That, that's what I was going to ask. I mean, it, that is continuing to rise. Do you think that is a, a continued growth curve? Oh, yeah, I mean, we, we've seen a very strong growth of the market over the last few years. Uh, we certainly uh, hope that that's going to continue. Uh, and the government has set very stretching long-term targets, very much uh, now that it's colours to the mast. So we're standing in front of a commitment there yeah. that almost every car and van will be zero emission by 2050. So we do have challenging targets, and it's very pleasing to see the market growth as we believe uh, you know, we uh, make that journey from where we are now into a zero emission transport. If you take a, a normal house, it would probably consume about 3,200 kilowatt hours of electricity per year. That's the same as running an EV for 10,000 miles, which is about what the average uh, domestic person is going to be running. So it's effectively, for every EV that we connect to the network, it's adding an extra house. It's an extra house. That's a really clear way of seeing it. I've never actually understood those figures before. Basically, if there were two million electric cars on the, ha uh, on the roads, it's the equivalent of having two million new homes, which, is, which would be, have an enormous impact. Exactly, exactly, yeah. But I suppose the one difference is that what, what a house does is just consume electricity, and what a car does up to a point is also store it as well as consume it so that's a, that's the interesting picture that's amazing yeah there. yeah i mean the flexibility that we could go and get from batteries is pretty immense uh, for the networks so like you say you've got a big store of energy and the interesting thing about vehicles as well is that they kind of follow where people go so people move from uh, the uh, town centres in the day, which is where we have the big load, out to the domestic uh, places uh, in the evening, which also mirrors uh, how the load on the electricity networks. So if we could use the storage in built the vehicles to move that power from uh, cities out into domestic areas, then that would sort of um, replace the need for us putting extra cables, which is going to cause disruption to right. the networks. Right. So the, so the part, a very important part of the picture then is the vehicle to grid very much so, yeah. technology, that's, that's a vital part of it. Yeah, if we can harness uh, vehicle to grid, and then that can save us from building any extra cables, digging up roads and causing lots of disruption. And potentially from building new power stations. I mean, it, you, you'll be distributed, you could time shift that power to a certain extent. Yeah, yeah, uh, so, you know, a lot of the, um, the technologies, they rely on uh, base load and predictable load, and the uh, renewable generation that we've connected onto the network now is very intermittent, and that makes the job of, uh, of planning and uh, forecasting what energy is going to be used a lot harder, trying to balance the network. Whereas if you've got uh, more energy storage on the network, you can use that as a sink to balance out any fluctuations that we might have with some of that other generation. So electrification can be great for the consumer, but it can be great for industry as well, and the UK industry can really capitalise on those changes. A of it is what we're seeing here is that there are an enormous amount of, of companies from this country that are making amazing stuff. Yeah, definitely, and you know the, the UK is globally recognised as being a hub of innovation. Yeah, you know, like we've got world class universities, we've got world class small companies developing truly, truly amazing technology, and we see many of that around here. here. Um, sometimes we're challenged with taking that technology to market and that's, that's kind of why the Advanced Propulsion Centre exists in its essence. We're about trying to accelerate that development of those great technologies and make sure we do commercialise them. You know, the government set an ambitious target. I think when you look around, UK industry's got the solutions that can deliver that. So it's about embracing that and being able to wrap it up in you know, compelling propositions that you can sell to consumers and, and make interesting product. And we've got all the right ingredients, so it's a great opportunity. Sorry. Well, that's it for this episode. If you're thinking of getting an electric car, if you've already got an electric car and you want to take part in the, uh, the Electric Nation project, all the links are down below. I think it's a really interesting project. It's a vital step that we have to take in order to electrify the transport fleet. So, there we go. Obviously, have a quick look at the Patreon uh, page. Obviously, that doesn't fund this particular episode, but all the other episodes, it's vitally important for us. Please subscribe to Fully Charged. And, of course, as usual, if you have been, thank you for watching. Thank <laughs> you.